Well, the future of modern warfare is like any other industry. Technology will play a big role. Last week, more than 1,000 researchers, including Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, signed a letter to the UN asking for a ban on the development and use of autonomous weapons or killer robots. My next guest says they will actually save lives. The author of Ghost Fleet, P.W. Singer, with me now. So, P.W., thanks so much for joining us. So why do you disagree with those who signed the letter. Those are some of our best and brightest minds. I don't disagree with the sentiment um, that they want to cause positive change in the world. I think what I disagree with is the idea of how effective this effort is going to be. The book that we did documents right now at least 21 different cases of working on this kind of weaponry in the U.S. and China, et cetera. And the reason the militaries are working on this is not because they think it's cool. It's not because of you know some kind of Terminator vision. It's because they think it's going to be useful. And so if this effort is going to win out, um, this letter writing campaign, it's going to have to overcome the idea of use. The other thing to mention here is, of course, it's not just the military that's working on robotics and autonomy. It's private business. It's companies like Google and Amazon and the like. And so if it's playing out in the civilian sector, it's going to happen. It's going to move over into war, too. OK, but how can we estimate or how can we make it so that only the right armies, this sounds like a crazy question, are building these and not the wrong ones? I mean, who's to judge? Well, I think you've just put your finger on the problem. Every single technology in history uh, has been used for both good and bad, whether it's a stone or whether it's a drone. With drones, we've seen everything from the U.S. military to ISIS fly them. I think what makes these technologies um, so challenging is that they have very low barriers to entry right now. And so if we're looking at a future conflict, um, be it a small war or a big war with China or Russia, all the different players are going to have this this technology and that's a very big difference for the US that we explore in Ghost Fleet is what does it mean to go into a war where you're not a generation ahead of the other side in technology and as for when we see this kind of technology in the battlefield when is it well we're already seeing uh, robotics in the battlefield right now um, you know for example in the war against ISIS everyone from the US military to the Syrian military to ISIS itself have flown drones I think if you're looking forward to the 2020s period you're gonna see technology that's more and more autonomous and by that I mean not just the cars that we drive on highways or Amazon delivery drones but also the drones that are out there in the battlefield and you know for example uh, the US Navy has already tested out a drone that took off and landed from an aircraft carrier on its own, the toughest human pilot task. That, of course, is going to move into a future war. Same thing, China has three different long-range strike programs that are drone, that are unmanned. If we were to fight them, they would be using these kind of technologies. So the bottom line here is that if there was a world war, which we explore in this book, it would be one where you'd see a mix of man and machine. And, of course, it's not just robotic systems in and of themselves. It's that the man systems will become more robotic, a lot like how we have cars right now that can parallel park themselves. The U.S. Navy is building a new warship right. that it has about one-tenth the size of the crew in the past because the warship's so highly robotic. P.W., glad to have you with us. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Great book. P.W. Singer joining us there. He is the author of Ghost Fleet.